15 years ago, a group of pupils left this school in Suffolk for the very last time. But now, the classes of 1987 and 1988 are on their way back for a school reunion. What is it like to take a journey back to the hopes, dreams, loves and failures of your past? I don't know why I should be nervous, but I am. I feel guilty at the moment about seeing my girlfriend. Oh my God, I think I'm about to cry. I'm very excited about it, actually. I didn't fit in at all. Not at all. This is going to be horrible. I fell in love with her. She was my first love. <laughs> How are you doing? Right? Will present day reality match up to teenage memories? Over two days, the former pupils of Framlingham will be reunited as they rediscover long-lost friendships. After 15 years, how will relationships have stood the test of time? And when they meet each other, will it be just as if it was yesterday? I am surprised, Dad, is most surprised, is how crap we've all been at keeping in touch. Absolutely, we don't see anyone. I know one thing, I bet you, any money, it will be like we've never been apart. Framlingham is stunning. Got the mere, where we always used to go and skate as kids, um, overlooking the castle, which has a, an amazing history. The buildings of Framlingham are, you know, incredible structure, the grounds, um, and everything about it is, you know, very privileged to have actually gone to Framlingham. The dining room, the noise, the clanking of the cutlery, the doors, the footsteps of certain halls and doors that will sound exactly the same. The smell of the changing room, the getting dressed and the putting a house shirt on. Keep away! Keep away! It's something that you never thought you'd ever get to do again. Framlingham College, a public school based in rural Suffolk, is made up of a mixture of boarders and day pupils. There was definitely a divide between the day boys and the boarders. The way it worked was that if you were a day boy, you were put in a separate house, which was called Ziegley, and there were a number of houses. There was always a lot of competitiveness between the day boys and the boarders. When we walked into assembly, the boarders would all make noises like sheep, so they'd all go, bah, bah, because we were arables, and we came from the land. Definitely if a day boy could get one over on a board, it was great. Framlingham had been a boys' school, but in the late 1970s, girls joined for the first time. It was fantastic. There were, I think, the ratio was 500 boys, um, and there were probably less than 100 girls. All the girls walked in, and we had uh, A4 pieces of paper with um, scores on. In our year, there were 10 girls, um, and so there must have been over 150 boys. Five boys to every girl. So heaven, really. <laughs> Ex-Framlinghamiums from the years 87 and 88 are returning to the school. Back in 1988, the head girl was Bobby Scott. She just took on so much and she excelled at so much. She was incredible at athletics and sporting. She just swept the floor with everybody else on that. She was, you know, witty, she was intelligent, she was athletic, she was musical, she could do absolutely everything. She was head girl before she was ever head girl, if you see what I mean. I was at the thick of things, but it was probably because I was quite in your face in certain respects. But this is just going to be woe as soon as I come round the corner and start to see it, and just seeing Albert standing there that we used to cover in toilet paper every time we got a chance. I was quite dramatic, everything was quite a big deal, I was quite emotionally charged. And I'm just about to see it now. Oh, it's still gorgeous. Ah. Oh my God, I think I'm about to cry. <sighs> no, I'm okay. Oh, that's... Sorry. And I will never be free. You'll always be a part of me. God, I 
Some pupils had a different experience of Framlingham. This is the first time Janine Wetherill has been back since she was asked to leave. I was the common, the common girl, and and uh, it was it was it was hard. Janine was a bit of a shock. Didn't expect that at all. I think looking back, we were horrible to her. I didn't. I didn't fit in at all. Not at all. It was the 80s when I was into Duran Duran and I had a very 80s hairstyle and uh, I was just normal but the minute I got to Fram it made me realise how in, in that world how unnormal I was. To the people in Framingham I evidently had some sort of London cockney accent <laughs> and they used to, yeah, I used to sit there and I'd say something and they'd correct me on the way I said it because it was the, the year of the Sloanes and things like that so I didn't speak how everybody else spoke and um, I looked the way I looked because I was, as far as I was concerned, I had a Simon Le Bon haircut and <laughs> it was very trendy <laughs> it wasn't for school. This is really strange. I feel like a fake being here, really. I feel like I shouldn't be here. Because I was asked to leave, it's just... <clears throat> no, it just feels like I shouldn't be here. I'm just trying to remember my classrooms now. That's where I was daydreaming all my life away, actually looking at the castle and the, um, the church the whole time. Oh, it's just still so lovely. This is a scary place. Can you imagine driving up that drive in the middle of winter and it's pouring with rain and it's freezing and it's black and you've just got this, it's like something out of the Adams family. Or just <laughs> expect a bolt of lightning to go over it. I think I've actually got myself back together again now, but I was actually very choked. I didn't think I'd actually react like that. I really didn't. It was hard, but it was, it was also fun, but it was hard for everybody in their own separate ways when you were in this place is you got lonely and there was nothing you could do about it. You were here. That's tough. You get lonely, oh well. I haven't seen it for so long and the fact... Oh God, I'm going again. I don't know, I suppose it's actually coming back and life was actually so different then. My dad was still alive and all of the friends and I haven't kept in touch with any of them. I suppose I'm actually just getting myself really concerned about how I'm going to be with people because things have moved on so much. And it was a really good time. It was a really good time when I was here. Oh. No tradesman's entrance now. This is going to be horrible. This is going to be horrible. If you can get in the door. Back in 1987, the school put on a production of West Side Story. Bobby played Maria, and the part of Tony was played by Tim Church. Tim Church was sort of... Um the jack the lad around the school. Tim Church was head uh, house captain, yeah, that's right. Tim Church, stud himself of Framlingham College, allegedly. Could it be? Yes, it could. Something's coming, something good. I think he just had a general sort of arrogance about him, which at the time, 17, everyone thought was brilliant. He was good at most things. Thought he was the bee's knees, and was at the time. Something's coming, I don't know what it is, but it is gonna be great. You know, he'd come in and recount various stories of um, girls that he'd met or whatever and had had little uh, uh, trysts with. Uh. <laughs> I'm Tim Church and I'm Stud Muffin. Of course you like me. <laughs> the bloody hell have you been? <laughs> You're a star, darling, of course. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine. My God, you look no different. Uh, I'd love to say the same about you. <laughs> yes, I know, but you're not going to because you never did. <laughs> it's interesting because Bobby and Tim were obviously both the leads in West Side Story. 
which I suppose was quite apt, really, because they were leading figures, if you like, in school life. They made a good um, main couple. They were both very um, the key players of both of their years. Oh, we were going to do that bit yes. as well. Oh my it's God! On the balcony. No way! On the balcony. Oh, no way. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> in fact, um, I can't remember whether they ever got it on doing West Side Story, but um, they seem to be enjoying. Seem to be enjoying it. That's what I've been looking at for the last <laughs> half an hour. <laughs> you, mean you, you. you mean you didn't keep yours? N well, you know where they got them from, don't you? These are mine. Oh, these are all They're yours. Yeah. Yeah. They've been on your bedroom all that long. I'm shocked. They have actually been out quite a long time. My mum and dad just used to love them. I'm touched. Well, you know. That's fantastic. You were there, you were there, Tim, all the time. That's <laughs> right. Quite what yeah. I remember. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't know where they Bobby, if you can, if, if you can come here this way, right? <laughs> Stay, go quickly. I'm not afraid. They are strict with me, please. I love you. Yes, yes, hurry, go. They've got a menu. <laughs> They've got a menu for what they have to eat. We never had a menu. Could they do a television? For goodness sake, and pool tables and a Mars bar machine and their own room. The uniform has changed completely. I mean, it was never this trendy. You had a tuck shop. That was it. This is incredible how so much can change. This is just as it was. <laughs> this is just as it was. That is just. Yeah, it, 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 it is right. As we're always saying. <laughs> No, every single rehearsal was just punctuated with, 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 with giggling when it needed to be serious. Giggly, again. My God, this is just so embarrassing. I've gone from tears just outside to now laughing my head off as soon as I saw him again. It's just exactly the same. Yeah. But it's a relief, because I thought it was going to be really weird, but it's not. Yeah. It's just easy. There used to be a telephone just around the corner there, and at the beginning of term is when and you, people used to get lonely. And the amount of times you'd walk there and there would be someone on the phone, just tears stream. I oh, used to be one of them. Tears streaming, just going, I want to come home, I want to come home. But I just remember that it was around that corner there because it was right near the office. And you used to try and do it so nobody could hear you. So you should be have your head right down and go, I want to come home. I was one of them. I want to come home, I want to come home. With tears streaming down your face and you'd walk away because it you know, doesn't, doesn't affect me, doesn't affect me, I'm not missing home. Classes of 1987 and 1988 at Framlingham College are having a school reunion. One former pupil, David Bull, is now well known. At school I was relatively quiet. I was not an extrovert. I kept myself fairly to myself. David was uh, sort of um, more of the academic type of person. I guess I was a bit of a girly swat and uh, I did my work and I um, I always made sure things were in on time. He didn't strike me as the most incredibly charismatic individual at school. David is now one of the presenters of BBC TV's Watchdog. I don't think I ever envisaged at the age of 18 coming back at 32, which I am now, uh, as someone on television, as someone on, on primetime television. Um, it's something I dreamed for, something I hoped for. I'm not sure I, at, at 18, I don't know that I would have thought it was achievable. We went out together when we were just 17. I can't keep us away from long. 
<laughs> no, that's very true. And I ran a disco, and uh, a mobile disco, and Susie... Um, was his slave. Rubbish. You loved carrying all the records. <laughs> you were very good behind the decks. The old pupils are up against the biology class of 2002. With two doctors and two scientists, the 30-somethings appear to have a distinct advantage. You are expected to work as a team. As you will discover, there is one main biochemical analysis to be worked at. Up you go. How do you measure this? What are you putting in there? How long do you think you have to wade through? What's that going to prove? Yes, and it wouldn't work. You got it wrong. Can you tell me what's happening in here, David? What's a clue? They're doing rather well over there. Yes, I'm sure they are. I'll leave you to, to try and sort out the mess. Thanks. And that is time. Ladies and gentlemen, that is time. Finish. Can you just turn your Bunsen burners out? So the total, I think, is 27 out of 30. With the final marks given out, the ex framling Hamians are narrowly beaten by the current star pupils. 29 is a, a grade A star. Well done. The most bizarre thing I think about the whole um, biology lesson was that it was like we never left. And giggled through the whole thing. Mark did all the work. Susie bossed me around, and I looked nonplussed about the whole event. Um, nothing had changed. And then even at the end, we were deducted points um, because she didn't wear safety goggles. And suddenly, that was my fault. It was almost as though we'd never been away. And this afternoon, uh, we've all been back together, um, and it's as though we've never been apart. Which is six marks overall for the biochemical analysis. Oh. Oh. In the sixth form, some girls lived together, which led to some unlikely friendships. I shared a room with Susie Martin. We were completely chalk and cheese. She was what I would call horsey, and I was common, <laughs> for want of a better word, and we were very, very different. She was quite quiet, quite reserved, wouldn't be naughty. It was brilliant fun. And she wasn't afraid to do anything, so I think she sort of brought, maybe I was a bit quiet before that, she brought people out of there, out of themselves. She was the one that used to plait my hair every morning, French braid my hair. She knew how to do it because she had a horse, <laughs> she had a horse and she used to braid its tail. And she used to braid my hair. She was a nice, gentle person. I remember sitting with Susie and um, going through pronunciation and saying things like the rain in Spain from Smeany on the plane. Whether it was serious or not, a joke, it was probably, most of the time it was a joke, but it still did what it needed to do, which was um, teach me to speak properly. By the time I left, we were turning it into a young lady. It was, that sounds horrible. It sounds, doesn't it? <laughs> they were turning me into a young lady. And I wasn't not a young lady, I was just a bit... I was just common. No, you... While sharing a room with Janine, Susie went out with heartthrob Tim Church. The kids now, not... When Susie Martin and Tim Church went out together, they were the glamour. They were the posh and becks of Framingham College. Like the perfect couple. They went well together. It was, a, it was an obvious match. I heard Tim Church was going to be here. Yes, I have as well. Oh, Mr. Jesus Christ, he's saw himself. <laughs> Risen again. <laughs> <laughs> he was in everything. <laughs> he had the solo and every choir thing. He did. He was. Yeah. That's all he could do was sing, you see. Didn't yeah. have any other talents. No. Not Bottom at all. Breaking girls' hearts. Yeah, I agree. Oh, yeah. And then leaving their friends to pick up the pieces. January the 31st. Tim still fancies me and I likewise. Janine and I are getting on well as I feel that she's the only one I can talk to. Yeah, but well, you haven't seen him. I can't seen him. Have you seen him? Though? No, not at all. Just going to be very weird. I myself am quite happy as I have a few friends and above all I've got Tim. I haven't seen Susie um, Martin since we left school. Uh, 
uh, I was in the lower sixth at the same time she was in the lower sixth. She looked great. And so I was very happy to be with Susie. Because Susie was very glamorous. She was very glamorous um, and always well turned out. Tim was always very well dressed. I think he had a, a waistcoat or two and kind of slim and athletic looking. So the two of them was absolutely revolting. I think I went out with her for, ooh, probably a term and a half. I mean, it was as long as that. I think Tim Church I would love to see and just to see almost what it was, why he featured so heavily in my life for that time. What? I didn't recognise you. How could you oh. not recognise her? Oh, can't remember. Really? Come on in. I didn't recognise it at all. That's terrible. It's, 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 it's really polite. It's really polite. Hello. Boy. <laughs> 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 it's a bit dark in there, isn't it? It's That's a bugger, that is. It was sunny, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Excellent. Yeah. Really? Come on in. I didn't recognise you at all. That's terrible. Really? Really? Can't tell you that bit. And now we'll stand around feeling silly. Sorry. Tim had a few words with me at lunchtime yesterday saying that we didn't get on because we never talked to one another and I don't trust him and I don't think that he cares for me. We left it unsolved and spent sociology lesson in silence. I've still got loads of time. Tim came over at prep break. We had a long chat and decided that Tim was always moody and starting the arguments, but I didn't help. We ended by him giving me a hug, which was just what I needed, and I promised to try harder to get on with him. Of course you're How playing. heavy! <laughs> oh my God! How so profound! Yeah, you'll never be right. no, right. 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 the moment I leave. I love him so much, and I think I have finally realised who the real Tim Church is. Please let me be kind to him, and forgive me for making him so unhappy. <laughs> Is there, is there? Tim and Susie parted company after a term and a half, and for Tim, another term meant another girl. May the 5th. Well, life goes on. Red Rose's diary, and it says that she's nearly finished with Tim, but they've obviously made up. Worse luck. I've decided that I don't really love Tim anymore, but I still hate Rose, the cocky little bitch. <laughs> Tim, any thoughts on Susie? Uh, she's still looking very foxy, I have to say. I'm going to be very careful, that's it. Very careful. I would. Thank you much, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> Tim, yes, was the love of my life when I was here, but no, no. there's nothing there no, now. No. <laughs> Nick Cook, we, everybody liked Nick yeah. Cook. He was well, one of the girls um, though, wasn't he? He, he was, was really nice. Girls. He, he was, was cute. really nice. Nick was one of the sort of girls' best friends type boy. He went out with one of the girls, but that was all that I remember. He was always there for all the girls. But the, the boys were really awful to him a lot of the time. Yeah, well. no, so no, he sort of hung around with the girls. He was just yeah. a nice bloke. I was uh, a bit disappointed not to be recognised by Susie Martin. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't look as good as us. Do you think? Nick has. Nick has. Nick still looks nice. Yeah, but it doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't look bad with it. No. And then to be told, we well, used to sure. fancy you at school. Which was good, that was fine, but, but not Nick, to be recognised. I, I know I've put on a bit of weight, boys, but... Nick, can't be that bad. Right, that's a bit of an understatement, isn't it? <laughs> but it's it, you sort of think, oh, who am I going to see? But then I didn't really fancy anybody when I was here. No. At no. all. They weren't exactly the best-looking blokes in the world, so... No. They thought they were. <laughs> they thought they were. Oh, yeah. And they still <laughs> probably do. What's, I think what's most important to you uh, is your peer acceptance, getting on with people, being being comfortable in, in the group of people that you like being with and being, you know, accepted in that group is great. But she know Nick Cook had happily attended Framlingham since he was 13, but in the sixth form he was to face an experience that would affect the rest of his life as one-time friends suddenly turned against him. I was King Dreg, yeah, because the, the jocks had considered everybody who wasn't a jock was a dreg. It's a dreadful word, and, um, and I was King Dreg. 
for whatever reason, suddenly Nick became someone that people didn't really want to to to, to be seen with or to, to talk to. I suddenly found myself basically, uh, I don't know if the right word is, or the right description was ostracised or, or sent to Coventry or, you know, blackballed. Um, I suddenly found myself where all the people who I thought were my friends suddenly weren't. He had quite a hard time with some of the guys. I don't know why, why they decided that he wasn't part of their call set. And I remember coming into the dining room one day and going to sit at the, at the, the table with all the people who I've normally sat with and, um, and they all just got up. And suddenly I'm sat on my table, sitting on my own, wondering whether this is a joke or not. He didn't know why. If he'd said something, he could apologise. If he'd done something, um, he could apologise. If he, if he was doing something that irritated somebody to the extent they couldn't stand him, he could stop doing that, maybe, around them or something. I was devastated. Can you imagine what it's like to suddenly um, find that who, all the people who you thought were your mates, you suddenly got no mates? As a result of those... Uh, of that year, I really did find out who my really who were proper friends, the people who stood by me. My friends were that group of you know lads or whatever who who sort of turned their backs on him. Tim Church is one of my best friends and still remains one of my best friends. At the time, was known as Dreg Lover. You know, um, I, had, I had no problems standing by him because he was a very good friend of mine. He went through quite a lot of crap, but he stood by me and he never. He never stopped talking to me, and he said no. It was the sort of friendship that ran a lot deeper than a lot of the friendships that that, that are made and, and lost at, at school anyway. Uh, he's a, he's one of those soulmates. He's a friend for life. That's all, you <laughs> bastards. <laughs> My dad turned around to me and he said, but bear this in mind. He said, if you don't stand up to this now and get through this, then, then you, you're going to have the same problem the next time. That was the making of me in many ways was that year of realising that I could stand up on my own two feet and I could face up to these things. House matches, very serious, very serious. It's like Harry Potter with um, Gryffindor and Smither and Hufflepuff and, and whatever. Oh, get it in! And the inter-house rivalries, obviously. Crucial. Victoria! Everything you do is for the house. You have inter-house competitions, inter-house singing competitions. Rugby, it would be hockey, it would be uh, tennis, it would be running. Bridge, chess. You name it, everything is into house. Stradbroke shirt still looks exactly the same as it did 14 years ago. You have to run against everybody else in your year. I won it the first year only because the chap in front of me who was, elite, who was leading the race went the wrong way. <laughs> the fact that I'd won that race, you know, stood me in great stead internally within Rendlesham. You know, that was like, yeah, well done, Garnham, you've, uh, you know, house points and all the rest of it, whatever it was, you know. Your house, your colours. You want to get the hands on that shield? Look at that. That is awesome. My house. Randleship, you know. Fantastic. That's great. It it is. That's a new way of house colours with, with enormous amount of pride. Here we are. And you wouldn't be seen dead wearing Strabrook's scarlet, you know, if you're a Rendlesham Marine and you, you had to wear red. You wouldn't do it, you wouldn't put it on in the same way. A Leeds United fan would not be seen dead wearing black and white stripes of Newcastle, just wouldn't. The boys of 87 have once again donned the shirts of Stradbrook and Rendlesham to face each other on the hockey pitch for one last time.
Very anyway. slow and fat. Yeah, we used to be fit ones as well. The most amazing feeling of nostalgia was to the point where, you know, the goosebumps was after the hockey, walking back, a group of friends, the, the house behind and the slope and that part of the evening, and that was so powerful. I didn't think that that could be, you know, recreated or that that feeling of just sheer nostalgia was just awesome. Well, my little honey buns had a terrible Monday. I was in a state of depression all day over everything. AJ doesn't want to talk to me and I don't want to talk to him. Had a really bad English test. Physics times two. Ugh. I'm still in a state of depression. I feel really suicidal. That's terrible. Oh dear. See what I remember about rose-tinted spectacles? At the time, I obviously wasn't very happy. Fiona Kelsall was Bobby Scott's best friend throughout school. However, their friendship was laced with rivalry, and they have not seen each other for over a decade. But the memories are still vivid. This afternoon, we had to go to the Col to sort out what's happening tomorrow. I'm in 4A, and the bad thing is I might be with Roberta. If she does German, I will be. I think I, I'm going to be nervous as to, is she still going to have that hold over me? Even, even still, will she still be the dominant one in the conversation? And I bet she will be. She'll probably do most of the talking and I'll have to sit back. I probably won't get a word in edgeways. Most of the time, I'm in your day. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> I can hear these footsteps. It's like, is she coming or not? <laughs> well, I'm At 13, 14, um, I think I was quite bossy in a manipulative sense. Bobby was oh, right old bossy old cow. Used she really was. Oh, you used to arrive on the bus. Um, oh yeah, and so I used, outside, I used, and you always used to wait for me up at the gate. Because if you? I didn't carry your bag, you wouldn't talk to me for the rest of the day. Was I really? That you wonderful? were that bad. Girls are far worse than boys, and fourteen to sixteen-year-old girls are the worst ever. Um, I was certainly awful to some people some of the time, um, and if somebody gets in your way of you know, if you're very close to somebody and they try and muscle in, then, you know, not a cat fight, but you can certainly, the claws are out and you're, you know, you're after them. And Catherine would bring in biscuits, a whole packet of biscuits, which you would share. And, and if I didn't bring in biscuits, and I, my mum was saying, I can't afford to keep buying you biscuits to take to school every day. And it's like you would, there were the three of us and you yeah. would be like in favour with one or the other. We could never seem to be the whole three. No. God, how stupid was I? <laughs> It's quite frightening, really. Bobby had um, this bubble around her. Nothing could hurt her or harm her. If she did something wrong, she just seemed to get away with it. When I think back on it now, you know, this has sort of like prompted me. And when people are sort of, I've been said, well, what was this story about this? And what was this story yeah. about that? I'm thinking, oh, God, here we go again. <laughs> we stayed one evening for um, a play rehearsal, I think it was. And basically, she got caught. I don't know what the way. <laughs> I want to say in flagrante, but I don't think it was quite as extreme as that. Down in the changing rooms, using my games kit as a pillow, while she slept with Jim Craig. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. You did. You did. did. And you did it underneath Jane's desk. You did. I am not saying this on film. <laughs> you did. <laughs> I was like, ooh, I can't believe you did that. And she said to me, oh yes, it was on your desk. I can remember because we all had our own desk. I was going, I don't believe her. I was just going, yes, yes. She really enjoyed that. I think you just came in and said, we did it under your desk what? just to upset her. Whether you yeah. had or not, I don't know. But no, I hadn't though, actually. Oh, right, okay. No, well, I no, I, just I, did I, I, did it, I did do it to upset her. <laughs> if we were doing something wrong, I always got caught. Yet she was, in, you know, impenetrable. It was amazing. The day I wasn't made a prefect, the only girl of the ten who hadn't been made one, not a monitor, nothing. Today has been really shit. Mrs. Essling announced prefects. I've not been even made a shitty monitor, and Bobby is head of house. We were sat, and it went in reverse order. They read out the monitors, they read out the prefects, and there were like two names left, and there was yours and mine. And it was like, and head girl is 
and you have this butterflies in your stomach and you think, it can't be me, but surely it can't be her. Roberta Scott! And I was just like, what? Oh my God. What am I? I, I don't remember remember that Don't at you remember? All. Oh, I was in floods of tears. When Bobby's name was read out, that was it. Floods of tears and, you know, terrible. Oh God, that must have been awful. I was never made anything. I was just like gutted. You guys had ties and stuff. Do you remember you always got ties for things? I'm just like, oh, I've got nothing. <laughs> I hope it hasn't scarred you too much. <laughs> scarred for life over that one. Still wholeheartedly competitive. Really badly so, right. you know, I have to win. But I mean, but this, it's, I suppose I, I balance it out with the fact that I have to say that I have a 19-month clone of myself, so it all comes back to roost. Is she like I've you? Got, she's very, very single-minded. Oh, blimey. So, Mini does, Bobby. you know, what goes around comes around. So I'm, I am getting punished <laughs> for the way I have behaved while I've been a child, because I now have one of my own. No, oh, it was shocking. Yeah, but I've thought she would look different but she didn't she looked the same as she always was and she acts the same as she was and she's she's still bossy but um i managed to get a few words in <laughs> i heard some things about myself from other people that i was quite surprised at in the fact that maybe i did know about it at the time but i wasn't really listening it was nice as an adult to say you were a bossy cow and um for her to say back to me yes i know i was and how awful it was and um uh, and I've just confessed to her about snogging her boyfriend, and that's okay. <laughs> I was her, she was me. We were Outnumbered by the boys five to one, the Framlingham girls of 1988 had their pick. The one girl was pickier than most. I think she drew attention because she was, she was different. She was a sort of hybrid American English rose, if you see what I mean. There were loads of boys wanted to go out with her, but she, I don't know whether at the time she said she was saving herself for marriage, but I think that that was that was mentioned. I had this ridiculous principle about, you know, I was too young to appreciate what going out with someone meant. I, was, I must have been insufferable. She left a lot of broken hearts, lots of boys that wanted to go out with her, so much so that they formed the Wooden Spoon Club. You know, I've had the Wooden Spoon and the eternal offer of friendship again. So uh, that's where it came from, you know. It featured a fair few of, uh, a fair few of the lads in our year. A rank outsider came through and... Um, you know, it, it, that was the point we were missing, really. It wasn't about us, it was about what Jane wanted. What Janaina wanted was Simon Brown, class wit and national clay pigeon shooting champion. Still here then. There was a Victor, yeah, he'd love that actually. If I, if, unless he's changed enormously. Um, Simon, who was a day boy. Initially, I wasn't particularly interested, um, which is an odd thing for an 18 year old boy to not be that interested in Janina. But I suppose I got to know her, I, you know, sort of, I fell in love with her. She was my first love. I haven't been in touch with Simon for some time. But we did stay in touch for lots because we went out well into our university years. We stayed in touch sometime after that. But it'd be lovely to see him again. Of just <laughs> of looking and waiting and seeing what. <laughs> How are you, all right? Oh my God! Oh, it's so good to see you. It's been a while, hasn't it? Oh my God! Oh, you look fantastic. Well, thank you very much. Nice T-shirt. Thank you. <laughs> I can't believe you're here. I know. <laughs> I was just talking about the play. It's the last person I expected to see. Well, was I know. You. I used to sit out there. I didn't used to come up here. I, I know. I know. I remember going to Macbeth twice, and I used to tell my friends that I was going to see one of the witches, uh, who was also a very attractive young lady from the year below. But um, I suppose I kind of, by that stage, really quite fancied Janina, and I suppose I really went to see that twice to see Janina. Sounds a bit pervy now, but... I came to see the play twice because you were in it. Don't you remember that? I'm sure I, I must thought you were coming to that. see Vanessa. Yeah, I, I know, but I wasn't. <laughs> I can't 
can't believe you. You're so full of it. I managed to get to the farm on the premise of looking at my Angora rabbits. And, um, and, um, well, I did want her to see my rabbits, but uh, they weren't really that impressive. All that business with trying to get her to see your rabbits, which is well dodgy now. <laughs> no, but I'm famous for the rabbits, though, aren't I? <laughs> oh. So I'm an actually, um, what, what do we call it? Bread Angora rabbits. Not person. <laughs> he bred Angora rabbits, and he, I was this whole charade of me trying to get him together with this other girl at school was, come and see my rabbits, is a whole new take on Well, it was better come than come and, and see, see my, my etchings, etchings, wasn't it? I know, anyway, but it was all a, a, a ruse, because we did eventually get together. <clears throat> we did. My God. We did. For whatever reason, I do not know, we were sitting on my parents' double bed in my parents' room, and, um... <laughs> and, um... And, uh... I told her how much I admired her earrings, and, uh, and so um, she uh, she um, she obviously knew the scam, uh, but she uh, she let me go ahead with it. And uh, as I was uh, removing one of her earrings, I uh, kissed her ear, and um, then she kissed me back. And uh, there we go on my parents' double bed. We used to work behind the bar, which was very odd because guys were always trying to chat you up. And I had to stand there and just clean the glasses, whistling to myself. You can have a go, mate, if you like. I don't know. It's incredible, though. I can't think. Like now, I think, well, you get on really well again and everything. But you can't see yourself in that situation again. I can't imagine us going out now. I don't know. I don't know. I, mean, I haven't spent any time with him. And obviously, I'm married and I have a family. So, of course, your whole mindset is completely different. But we did have a great time. We had such a laugh, and he is such a lovely man. What was different about Simon? Apart from the rabbits. Apart from the rabbits, which were an incredible pull. They were good, weren't they? Hmm? <laughs> no, he was, um, I don't know, you were just really down to earth. I had a he car. did make me laugh, and music, <laughs> you had a car. That was not the reason. I smoked Marlboro Lights. I mean, of course she has changed, and of course I have changed. I mean, you do, don't you? But um, when you look at, in someone's eyes and you just see the person as they were all those years ago and you just, um, I mean, you just feel that they haven't changed and, and that I haven't changed and it was just really, it was really great. You were really down to earth. Yeah. Easy going, good fun. I think that's so important for the first relationship you have is that it's a good one and you have, you know, lays down good foundations and stuff, so... Yeah, he's a special man. Goodbye, my Tony Island baby. Farewell, my own On the final night of the reunion, a party is held. The 1987 barbershop return to entertain their old classmates. It is slightly dreamlike. And also slightly sad in a way, because I think, well... I don't know how many people now I'll see again. So goodbye, farewell, the school was different things to different people, and the, the, the people who, who enjoyed it the most and who wanted to come and looking forward to it and stuff like that were the people who um, probably considered their school time here as the best five years of their lives. For me, the party has been really, really weird because everyone has seen me and I haven't seen anyone. No one has mentioned how I look and that's because they keep saying, well, I saw you on Monday. But I haven't seen them for 14 years and I keep wanting to say to some of them, well, you've um, eaten a lot in 14 years. Um, well done. And, and some people have aged fantastically well and others haven't. idea if you took a snapshot of somebody at 18 and you took a snapshot of somebody at 30 and then you asked them who would you rather be forever many years from now, there will be new I'd probably somebody give me a snapshot I'd have wanted to see me 
as a full colonel um, still in the army. How does it feel right at the start? When I left school, I wasn't going to go into the family business at all because I had A-levels, you know, because I was, gonna, I was ambitious and I was going to do enormous amount of things and be, you know, something different, mold breaker, you know, that's what I wanted to do. Regarding uh, married and, and children and things like that, yeah, that's more or less all I wanted. No, no, no. If someone had shown me a snapshot of what I've done, or at least how my life has progressed, I wouldn't have believed it in a million years. I wanted a lot of money. Money was everything. It still is. If somebody had told me then that I was going to be a teacher, I would have just laughed all the way. No way on God's earth was I going to be a teacher. It's turned out, and I'm, I'm happier now than I've ever been, but um, no, I would have laughed very hard. At the age of about 17, when it was clear I was going to flunk all of my A-levels, my father did offer to buy me a lorry so that I could be a haulage contractor. And at the time, it actually sounded quite like, like, like quite, quite a good uh, offer. Would I have been happy knowing at 18 where I am now? I wouldn't have been happy at 18 knowing that, but I'm ecstatically happy now. I got. I thought I was going to be a millionaire by the time I was 30, and you know, then you'd have the Ferrari and the Aston Martin in the garage, and you'd have loads of houses and this, that, and the other. And um, obviously, I've achieved that. <laughs> to not go to, well, to be anti a school reunion. Of course, it's choice, but to be anti a school reunion to say, oh no, never go back. That's like not keeping photographs of when you were a child or your children were children or your wedding or... I have, I think memory is vital, isn't it? Because you're made up of everything that's ever happened to you. A huge part of who I am has been formed by the years I spent here. She's called Spider and she wants a perfect match, preferably not one with eight legs though. See how she gets on tomorrow at nine o'clock. Uh, coming up next on Four Sex and the City, and it's the one where our heroine gets to snog Alanis Morissette. <laughs>